Hey everybody, welcome to the second part of this video series. So in this part, we're going to be looking for a public API. Okay, a public API uh, to work with. So I'm going to go Google a public API. Um, cool. So actually, let me look. Not, I, I actually literally typed Google a public API. Let's type in free public APIs because some APIs are paid for. I don't want one that's paid for. I'm going to want to sort of look for the easiest one I can find. So let's see here. So here's a, just a big list. Let's take a look at. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's say food and drink. Okay, now looking at these, I do not really want to deal with authentication. I don't want to like pass in any like. Maybe an API key, but I don't have to be dealing with like getting auth tokens, stuff like that. So ideally, no auth or API key auth sounds good to me. Um, HTTPS is fine. That's just going to naturally be everything. Cores, I want to avoid as well. Because that means I'm going to have to like, you won't, I won't be able to deploy it. It won't work when it's deployed because the browser will block it because it won't have the core security feature in the browser will block it. There's just nothing I can do about that. Um, outside of having to build a back end, but that's going to be outside the scope of this this particular tutorial. Okay, um, my recommendation would be to watch my videos on Netlify and Vercel functions as a easy way to kind of do that. Okay, so let's see here. No auth, HTTPS, unknown about coffee, so let's try this out. Coffee API. Okay, start your day with a lovely coffee images and API. Okay, random coffee JSON. Okay, and then it just gives us a object with the file with a random coffee. Okay, so essentially what this is going to basically literally I just call this URL and it just gives me a random coffee. Now if I, ra if I refresh this, does it give me a different coffee? Yes, I get a different coffee each time. Okay, that's neat. It's kind of like randomly generating a JSON file. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna just copy this URL. We'll start with that. Although I'd like to do something a little bit more. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Open food facts. Funk API. Brew dog. Rusty beer. Beer brewing tools. Spectacular recipes. Food products. And meal planning. Requires an API key. Community driven taco database. Ah, here. API to create data about a recipe, plant ingredients. Okay, let's try this. I do need an API key, but I can live with that. Okay, oh, this is a rapid API. No, 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 no. I don't want to go through all that right now. Um, mm -mm -mm. Recipes, I want no off. This can enter pass online Wixi auction statistical data. Interesting. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so here, oh cool, and that has a nice little like Swagger interface. Like this is, when you see this kind of setup, this is created through something called Swagger, which allows it to create like a visual so you can see like all the different URLs an API has. So this is pretty nice. Okay, so what I can do, the great thing about when you see a, a API that has like this sort of Swagger interface, I can quickly figure out like what's going on. So I can be like, okay, there's different, these are the different URLs. And, you know, this is a particular, so I can see like this is a, the data for a particular or singular auction. This is to get data on multiple auctions. Um, this is like distilleries and this is like a single distilleries data. So I'd like to get info on, let's say, let's take a look at distillery data. Uh, okay. It says we need to include a, you actually have to include the name of a particular distillery. So I want like the info on multiple distilleries. Okay, and there's no parameters. Okay, that's fine. So let's try it out. Let's see what data we get. Okay. And I'm getting an array of distilleries. So that's what this is doing. This is giving me an array of distilleries. So this is like all the different distilleries in their database. So that's a big chunk of data sitting there. Okay, this 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 is this is workable. And the great thing is that it has swagger, so testing it out was pretty easy. Like I just had to like literally just just test it out here. Um, we just have to get this token. Okay. Um, is there any other any volumes in terms of service? 
authorize name close Spot, sign up wait this pricing so do I have to pay for this API that the content select configure tag Some services to move all restriction in use. Okay, let's maybe avoid that. Okay. Board game geek. Yeah, that sounds fun. Oh no, XML API. Run for the hills. Okay. Um, as you can see, there's not like the best free APIs. Once you start willing to be willing to pay, you you know you get what you pay for. Um, games and comics, Amiibo P API, no, definitely not Battle.net. If you see OAuth, if you're a beginner, run for the hills, it gets complicated. Again, they do, he, this is this video series is targeted towards beginners. Um, let's see here, Chuck Norris database, let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's see here, a, a, the jokes are available, that's the API endpoint, so that's the URL. Okay, default case will result always like this. Changing the name of the main character. Next, returning raw JSON. It is also possible to automatically feed the results into a callback function. This is used for script communication in case regular HTML request doesn't work. Um, that's an interesting option. I've never seen that before. Any special characters, fetching a random joke. Fetching multiple random jokes, limiting category. So yeah, okay. So this is like a little, a bit decent. So let's just start by generating like a random joke. Okay. So now I'm going to be using plain vanilla JavaScript, but oh, actually, no, I'm going to actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use jQuery because I do want to use the Ajax function. Although it'd be the same thing with like the fetch function or the Axios function. They all do the same thing. They make an API request. But I'm, so I'm going to go get the jQuery script tag real quick. So I'm just copy that into my index.html. So that way, so that way jQuery is usable. Okay, hit save. Good. That makes jQuery usable. Now I can use jQuery in my JavaScript. And right now I'm just going to just try to uh, just see if I can display that joke. Okay. So first thing to do is that you always want to do is just test out your API, make sure it's like working. Okay, I'm gonna hit copy here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just say dollar sign dot ax, uh, ajax because again I'm using jQuery. Cool. I'm gonna add an S here because if not that's gonna become a problem later because again once you deploy it's gotta be HTTPS. Um, dot then so after the data comes in so that first line will request the data then this next line is gonna now go get the data. So I'm going to get some data. Now, first thing I want to do is just double check what do I get back. Okay, so I'm going to just console log whatever data I get. I don't know what it is. I don't. I mean, I don't know what it looks like. I just want to console log it. So that's going to be my first mission. Do I still have the index.html open in the browser? I think I do. So what I'm going to do is open up DevTools. Let's take a look at what I see in the console. And I'm not seeing this being called. So I'm going to try reopening this again. Open with live server. I'm going to open DevTools, go to the console, and there we see we do see the object being console logged. And I know this is my console log because if I look right here in the line, right here at the end it points to which line in my file I console logged it from. App.js line 3. So if I look at it, okay, I see that it's, it's I got a, a property of type success, value, and then I got this categories array, which is empty, so I'm not gonna worry about it. ID tw and 20. So really the only thing I care about is the joke text. So, okay, so let's, let's, take, let's try the console log that first. So that's the next thing, console.log. So if I look at this really carefully, console.log, I have to go into value, values the object, and then in there there's a property called joke. So it would be data.value.joke. So let's see if that works. And yes, that works. I'm console logging the joke. Great. Okay, nice. So 
there we go. So basically what I've done is I've gone, I've looked for a public API, found one, and I test it out. And this is generally always the first step in testing it out. You want to just like see if can you console log it directly. Now my next test is I want to make sure there's no cores issues. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this up to GitHub. Git, up for, well, git add dot, git commit dash m, sample API call, git push origin main. Okay, and that's going to take a second. That's going to push up to GitHub. Then Vercel will notice that I pushed it up to GitHub and update the website. So I should be able to go to the Vercel page and see that that console log in the console. And if I do, everything's good. If I see a cores error, then we have some other issues to go do. Hopefully that is not the case, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's visit the website. It might, have, it might not have finished redeploying yet. So we'll find that in a second. Okay, yep, and it works. See, I can see the, the console log there. So good. We don't have any cores issues because it works working when it's deployed. I made sure I had that HTTPS on there so that way it works when it's deployed because basically everything's always secure once it's deployed. So everything's hunky dory. Now I can actually begin like building the actual like site. So in the next video, we'll start actually building things out. I'll see you all there.